Good morning rock and metal fans and welcome to Iridium Rock and Metal Review. So today I'm going to carry on with the best songs of the year and I'm up to 2010. Yes, 2010. It's really horrible weather here. I've got my air wet. I'm not happy. But you know, I'm in the dryer now. So it's time to carry on with the best songs of the year. And like I said, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're nearly done on that. Another, another great year. Excuse me while I stir my tea. I've realised when I watched the video the other day and someone commented, what needs stirring so much? You take, you know, and I, I actually noticed in the video it was actually getting on my nerves. So I'm going to try and keep the stirring down to a minimum. The trouble is I've got a mic here and it picks it up. So every little stir is heard. It's nearly as annoying as hearing someone eating, but not quite so just one last stir for my tea <laughs> right okay 2010 let's get back on point so i've got 11 songs to talk about so really good year for rock and metal melodic stuff that i like you know 80s type stuff and here we go number 11 Avantasia dying for an angel. So if you don't know who Avantasia are, Tobias Samet of Egg Guy. A few albums out now, like metal operas, you would call them. Some of them sort of fall into that category. Some of them are straightforward, melodic, heavy rock. A little bit symphonic at times. But Dying for an Angel has got the one and only Klaus Main singing on that track. It's off the... Um, they bought out two albums, Angel of Babylon and Wicked Symphony, that year. So it's off of one of them. And I blew me now. I can't remember which one it's off of. I think it's um, Wicked Symphony. I'm probably wrong. I'm probably completely wrong. <laughs> but it's a great track, Dying for an Angel, featuring Klaus Main, number number 11. Brilliant song, really melodic. Suits Klaus Main's voice down to the ground. He's on top form. And Tobias Samet is a real clever guy. You know, check out them albums if you like your epic. That ain't an epic type of song. That's more of a commercial song. But if you like your stuff epic, you like symphonic stuff, not too much, but it's a great, great albums to listen. They are great albums to listen to. Get them. Brilliant singers, brilliant guests on the albums, brilliant guitarists, brilliant musicians all around. My number 10 is Crash Diet, Generation Wild. So these guys... And it's off the album Generation Wild. So these guys are brilliant. Another European band doing that sleazy LA Sunset Strip type um, sort of sound. But these guys have also got elements of Def Leppard in them. Very melodic, really catchy stuff. Generation Wild is a great song. Get the album. Maybe one of their best albums, Crash Diet. Uh, you know, maybe something you haven't heard before. It's ain't new to listen to. My number nine, really a cool band called FM, British band. And on their Metropolis album, they bought out a song called Hollow. They are so cool, this band. Steve Overland, the singer, has been likened to Michael Sweet a little bit. But he's a bit more mellow than him. He hasn't got the aggression. It's sort of the mellow side. It's an AOR band, so it's very mellow sort of stuff. You know, if you don't want something too heavy, but you want it all catchy, they're great. And they've been putting out brilliant music for years now. So check them out, FM Hollow. My number eight, a good return for a band called Rat. Of course, you all know who they are, 1980s band. They hit it quite big in the 80s, but during that period, difficult period during the 90s and the 2000s obviously you know they they sort of lost track like most most of those melodic sort of bands did poor album sales didn't really oh covering me blooming thing in it um didn't really have anything you know decent they bought out they tried to change a little bit didn't work out but they came back with infestation in 2010 an album that went right back to their old sound and best of me is a it could have fitted on one of those old albums. Easy. One of those, you know, Invasion of Privacy out of the Cellar albums. Great, great track. My number seven, 
Iron Maiden coming home from the final frontier. So, Maiden, you can't go wrong with Maiden. Coming home is a real, it's sort of near enough. It isn't. But, you know, Maiden don't do many ballads, do they? In fact, I could probably count them on like one finger. <laughs> but um, Coming Home is quite a nice, sort of slower track from them. Talking about, singing about, sort of touring and, you know, and Bruce Dickinson. I'm not sure if he did the lyrics for this. He probably did because it's talking about uh, flying and touring in the, in the plane and all that. It's a great, great song, great lyrics. Check it out. It's Classic Maiden. That's my number seven. My number six. Spoke about this band the other day. They got a new song out and that's Accept. And they bought their Blood of the Nations album out, which was bringing in their new singer, who is brilliant. And I've chosen Teutonic, Teutonic Terror. Real heavy. I think it's the second track in. It's a pounding song, but really catchy at the same time. Accept. They are brilliant at the moment and really looking forward to their new album out in January. My number five, going back to those European bands again, who've got that real sleazy, Def leopard as well type sound, and that's Crazy Licks and their song New Religion off the album New Religion. This is a brilliant, catchy, melodic song. You know what? All those people that goes, you know, the 80s is all there is. That's all there is. Give other bands a chance now. There's some new bands on the scene. And we've got to get behind those bands because those 80s bands, some of them are gone. Well, they are not got long to go. So let's get behind these bands and give them a chance. Crazy Licks. Spelt L-I-X-X. Great band. That's my number five. My number four. Bit of a different one on this list because it doesn't really fit in, but I do like this band. And that's Deftones and Diamond Eyes, the title track, off of, obviously off of Diamond Eyes. So this is a pounding track. It's so heavy. The guitar is one of the best guitar sounds I've heard. It's um, I always think that when you want a real cool guitar sound, something that's really heavy, I go back to Pantera, probably on the Far Beyond Driven album. But on this on this song, they really ramped this guitar up. It's not it's not a hardcore song or anything like that. He's, um, Chino Marino sings clean throughout the song. It grips you. This one. It's the opening track. It's Deftones at their best. That's my number four. My number three. Another band that's probably on the more metal side, and that's Avenged Sevenfold. And I chose so far away from their Nightmare album. My favourite album by Avenged Sevenfold. Basically, one of them they lost one of the members, one of the members died, and this album has got it's like a tribute to him. And this song in particular, So Far Away, it's such a sad song. It's such a sad song. Some people don't give Avenged Sevenfold a chance. They sort of don't like them. I don't know why. I think they're really clever. They're r brilliant musicians. They they do some real catchy stuff, and some of their slow songs are absolutely brilliant. They like a mix of, if you like, a Maiden, Metallica, but they do their own. They, they sound like their own band as well. They're a great band. That's a Venn Sevenfold. So far away was my number three. My number two. One of my favourite vocalists at the moment, and that's Jean. But he's appearing on the Master Plan album. Um, time to be king and the dark road I've chosen the song the dark road you know what there's loads of songs I could have chose off this one I was going through them and there was a probably about three or four I was fighting to to put on my favorite tracks they could have actually been all four of them tracks could have been in my top songs but I can't keep choosing songs from the same album this is my favorite album from master plan as well and it's an underrated one people didn't don't really rate it as much as the other two that John was on I think it's the best one. Easy. It's really got some, throughout the album, some real atmosphere. It really transports you, this album. It, it is brilliant. And John's voice, wow. If you haven't heard him yet, start listening. You're missing out. And my number one, one of my favourite bands of all time. Seen them loads of time, times uh, live. And that's Autobridge 
and I've chosen Show Me a Sign from Alter Bridge Free, AB Free. What a great track. This is right up there. I did my top tracks uh, with my mate a little while ago. I think it was my top 10 or 15 tracks. And I think Show Me a Sign might have come in at number two overall. The whole catalogue of Alter Bridge, and that's saying something. They're a great band. Um, I think these are the next band. I don't know if they're going to get any bigger, but I talked, spoke the other day about bands now, you know, older bands from the 80s and headlining festivals at the moment. And once they're gone, who's going to do that? You know, who's going to take over from the Maidens and Metallicas of this world? Who's going to be big enough to headline a 100,000 people festival and pack it? And, and people are actually looking towards, you know, these extreme bands, thinking they're going to be, they're like the ones who are going to be headlining these festivals. Well, I won't be going to any of them, you know, myself, my taste, and that's only my taste, I know. But sometimes when I go to Download Festival, I'm going there to see, and to tell you the truth, most of it is filled up with bands that are extreme or they've got growling vocals or shout all the time. You know, only thing that drags me really to a festival is someone like Maiden, Alter Bridge are playing, you know, people like that, or Metallica, they will draw me to it. Otherwise, I won't be going, you know, and that's just my choice, I know. But Alter Bridge 3 are like, in England especially, not in America, I know they've they've not hit big in America, but in, 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 in England, they're sort of teetering on the festival headlining. I don't know if they're going to get any bigger though, because I think they've they've probably reached out as far as they can go, maybe. But you never know. You never know. They are really big over in England, but not quite big enough to headline. I don't think in pulling hundred thousand people. But there you go. That's my two thousand and ten list. I know it's been a while since I got back to the lists, but you know what? I am sort of dragging them out as well because I'm at two thousand and ten. So you know, I can't. I can't keep doing lists that don't exist. <laughs> so once I've done them lists, I'll probably be doing my top tracks and that more on, you know, with the calls, with the subscribers. By the way, if you're interested and you're a subscriber and you, you know, you want to talk on the channel, if it's for you, it ain't for everyone. You need a little bit of confidence, I suppose, to do that sort of stuff. The guys who have been on there with me so far have been great and they're all coming back for a second go. There's some that haven't been on yet and I know they'll be great. But, you know, if you fancy a little chat, I've had a few messages from people and either reviewing a classic album, doing your top tracks from a band. Obviously, we both have to like the same band or the same album. Drop me, you know, go on uh, Facebook, friend request me on Iridium Reviews, message me and we'll we do it. All right, cool. Thank you very much for listening. That's my 2010 list. If you want to subscribe, please press the red button bottom right hand corner.